I was born in one of the world's most beautiful places, often called heaven on earth. My homeland is a mystic, rustic, and romantic valley nestled within the Himalayas. Politically occupied by India, Pakistan, and China, the three countries have fought five wars in the last 65 years to take full control of my land. My people are still struggling to find an identity of independence and freedom, as more than 80,000 lives have been lost in this cause over the last 25 to 30 years. I was born in a magical place called Kashmir. In 1989, our struggle for independence or self-governance took, took a very sharp turn as the movement turned into an armed conflict. Separatists have been since wanting a free Kashmir. Me and my entire generation growing up as children in Kashmir, and along with the generations that have followed, have lost all our childhood to a conflict that we never asked for. It was something that we inherited, and all our childhood was spent in it, and the, and the generations right now are spending their childhood within, within that conflict. I still remember very clearly in 1989, I was 13, and I was walking down the road in my neighborhood when I was stopped by armed soldiers who asked me who I was and where I was going. As I answered, without any provocation, I was slapped and beaten up mercilessly. And tears came down my face because I couldn't make sense of it. I didn't know how to react except just cry. I knew something had changed. A couple of years later, I very clearly remember, I was again stopped, but this time I was blindfolded, I was handcuffed, and I was taken to the city's most notorious interrogation centers called the Papa II Interrogation Center. The thought of going to Papa II still gives me the goosebumps today as I didn't know what my fate would be when I went there. Luckily, the gods were smiling at me, and I was just beaten up a little bit and then let go. This was a very difficult time for me, uh, and I was trying to make sense of things. And there was some kind of a force that was growing inside of me that was making me, making me deal with this change. It was helping me overcome the challenges and the fires that were burning outside. There was a resilience growing inside of me that was helping me overcome the bloodshed. And all I could do is just pray for this resilience to save me. Today, hundreds and thousands of children who live in war-torn countries, conflict zones, and places that are devastated by terrorism are living a life that we would never wish on our children. They face things such as hunger, violence, death by violence, deaths of their family members. They face things such as being converted into child mercenaries. And I'm sure none of us want that to happen to our children. And they also face the fact that they can be sold in the sex market as child sex slaves. It's very unfortunate. And these children have done nothing to deserve it. They've done nothing to deserve it. As things moved on, As things moved on, I moved away from Kashmir in search of a better life. And I ended up in Canada, where I live right now. But really, that connection with my homeland, with Kashmir, never went away.
Many years later, I tried to connect with Kashmir through a medium that I had found during the conflict and at the time when I was finding my resilience. I had created my own world where I would go and just listen to music and just internalize music. And that was my world that saved me from, from all that chaos. So many years down the line, I reached out back to that medium and I tried to connect back to Kashmir to something that I knew the best, music. I founded what was the world's first internet radio station that broadcasted Kashmiri music. There was none. I did it as an experiment, but as it turned out, hundreds and thousands of Kashmiris around the world started listening to the radio station. I was overwhelmed, and I was proud, and I was humbled. You see, everybody else had that resilience, and they had a need, and they were trying to meet that need by finding a means, by finding help. And I was fortunate enough to be the person who could give them that help. I sometimes think about traveling into the past and changing something in my life. And as you might guess, it definitely would be the war. It would be the conflict. I totally want to change it sometimes. But then I think about it and I think, well, if I change my past, would I still be the person that I am today? Would I still have the life experiences that I have today? And would I be able to make the impact on one, 10, 50, or 100 people that I've been able to do? Would I still be able to do that? Would I still be, able, would I still be married to my wife? I don't know. Maybe not. And sometimes we do this. We live in the past. But it's up to us if we use our past as something negative, as something of a downer, as something that, that takes us down, or do we use our past to power our dreams, to help us find that anchoring moment that defines who we are as a person? Why don't we use our past to fuel a passion that helps us overcome challenges and helps us overcome the problems that we've had in life. I think some part of me did that. Some part of me just used my resilience and went back into my past and used it to power my dreams and to power that, that, that need to reach out to people. If your past is sinking you and you're unable to make sense of it sometimes, and you see all these people in the world who are, who are suffering in, in many different circumstances and you really want to do something about it, but you can't because you think you're insignificant, well, stop doing that. Stop thinking about it right now. My message to you is, think about that moment in your life that changed you as a person. Or find that anchoring moment that defines who you are. You've got to do this homework. And once you've done that, find the resilience inside of you, because it is inside of you. Find that resilience inside of you to power up your dreams. And then last but not least, just do one small thing. Just one thing. Don't try to take over the world. Just do one small thing in your neighborhood, in your community, in your city, in your state, in your country, and then in the wide world that can make a difference for one person, not the entire world. And if you're able to do that, you've really redeemed everything about yourself. You probably don't have to go back and feel sad about your past and have regrets. So my question to you is, are you ready today to find that anchoring moment that defines who you are? Are you ready to build that resilience that will propel your dreams and help you overcome all your inhibitions? And are you ready today to take the smallest action that will change somebody else's life and be a transformative thing for them? Because it really matters. Thank you.